Hello, hello. I'm Cynthia Martin, your host of Lunch and Learn. Today on our Lunch and Learn, we're going to be talking about listening prayer. So I'm very happy to have you join me. Before I get started, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up. We have been broadcasting on Real Life Revised Ministry. It's actually just Real Life Revised uh, Facebook page for quite some time, over a year. And um, because of some changes as far as the algorithm goes for Facebook, we are moving that to a group. It's called Real Life Ministry. Now, we are broadcasting uh, through the month of January on our uh, on our page, but from starting in February, all of our ministry videos will be held and will be broadcast to the Real Life Ministry page, <laughs> ministry group, excuse me, so many Real Life here. Uh, currently, it's on Real Life Revised and in Real Life Ministry, but it will, as of February, only be on Real Life Ministry in the group. So we're moving from a page um, set up to a group set up. And so we're hoping to encourage for a little bit more interaction. Also, um, we are on several other media platforms and we most likely will be sending some of our videos over there as well. We also have a membership site, which I don't talk a whole lot about um, that we're building out and looking to um, move into in February. Uh, discipleship mentoring groups in which we'll meet together weekly and I'll be talking about more about that um, as the days to come. So today you're on Lunch and Learn at 1215. We host our program every Tuesday at 1215. Why 1215? Because um, the idea was is that it would be a lunch and learn. They could stop by on your lunch hour if you're working and if I made it right at noon, most people don't get out at lunch right at noon. However, I have found that most of our people are watching replays, which is fine. Um, but that's why it's um, at 12.15 and it is uh, entitled Lunch and Learn. And we like to take 30 minutes, which reminds me I'm going to have to set my timer because I have a tendency to go over. And so I'm trying to make these videos a little shorter so that you have more time to uh, the ability to, to jump in and, and watch those um, on your lunch hour and when you have minimal time. So today, I again want to welcome you. I'm real life a revised uh, founder, Cynthia Martin, and um, just want to welcome you uh, to the page today and to our discussion. So today I'm going to be talking about listening prayer. Yep, listening prayer. So, you know, uh, the scripture uh, tells us, Jesus said in John 10, 47, I'm the good shepherd and my sheep know me, right? And my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And that's in John 10, verse 47. And I'm reading, I read out of the NIV. I want to talk about that scripture for a few minutes. He's the good shepherd and my sheep know me. I, I'm not a farmer, never been a farmer. I lived around farmers when I grew up, but I don't know a whole lot around about sheep at all. I do know more about cows and horses because that's what I was around as I grew up. Never had cows myself, but I did have horses. But I did read um, some interesting things about the shepherd. I've heard lots of um, messages about the shepherd, the good shepherd. I also read a book called um, A Shepherd Looks at the, at the Psalms 23, and it was, it's a fabulous book. It's an older book. I recommend that you go and get that book if you don't know much about shepherding. And even if you think you do, uh, it's a book that I think that I should reread every year. And so um, when we understand who he is as the good shepherd, and the verse talks about, and my sheep know me. And I wonder about that sometimes, how much of God's children really know who he is as the father, who really know who Jesus is as the son, as the good shepherd, as our deliverer, as our Messiah, as all the things that he procured for us, correct? And even who Holy Spirit is, the one who comes and leads and guides and comforts, speaks to us and convicts us of sin. And the world of judgment, right? So um, the scripture here, I'm the good shepherd and the sheep know me. Um, it's important that we know who he is. And then this next line says, and my sheep listen to my voice. And I wonder if we just skip over that, that statement, my sheep listen to my voice. And maybe we assume that that means that we study scripture, that we read scripture, that we follow sermons, that we've been in church our life, our whole lives maybe, or that maybe we're not been in church our whole lives, but we're new to Christianity and we're going through discipleship courses and we're trying to learn who he is. But when do we listen to his voice? 
And then it goes on to say, I know them and they follow me. And so how can we follow someone if we don't know their voice? And uh, many, many pictures of the good shepherd or of a shepherd that each sheep within a flock knows the voice of their shepherd. You can go into a field and you can talk and you can sing and you can make all kinds of noise. But should the shepherd come into the field, then the sheep will gather around him because they know his voice. So we as Christians or followers of the way, you may say, or those of us who are Christ-like, right? Because isn't that what Christianity is to become Christ-like or maybe even little Christ? Now, I'm not saying I'm Messiah, uh, but I'm just saying that's really what Christians means. Or maybe we're individuals of the teacher, right? The master teachers. Or maybe we're lovers of God or all of those things are really encompassed when we say that we're a Christian, right? And so uh, those of us who are what we would say, one of those things or however you label yourself. And um, we know that there are certain disciplines as Christians and we believe very much in the study of God's word. And even more so uh, for me, not only just the study, but the application. How are we going to apply this portion of scripture to our lives? And I'm going to talk about that as part of what we're talking about today, about learning to listen to his voice that we found in the scripture that I just read. So there is a, an aspect to the study of God's word and the application of God's word that's personal. Um, there's an aspect to it that's corporate. The Bible, uh, I believe, really lends to that times that when we will come together. And I believe that we can learn from one another because other people have different insights because they have different gifts and they have different experiences and they can lend a lot to what we are learning. They can show us a different view, something that we wouldn't even consider, not because uh, it's outside of the realm of God, but because that's not our gifting and that's not the focus of what we see. And so there is that aspect of studying God's word and applying God's word that is personal. And there's also the aspect that's corporate. Now, we know also that as a Christian, that we have the discipline of studying God's word and applying it. But we also should have the discipline of prayer. Unfortunately, our prayers are not always a two way street. Now, we may say that prayer is a two way street or it's a two way communication. I'm talking to God and God is talking to me. But I, I wonder sometimes how many of us really hear God reply. Do we give him the uh, structure, the container, the time, the place, the, the situation in which he can speak back to us? So is it really a two-way street? I believe that God it wants it to be a two-way street. You know, again, I believe that prayer, is, there's a personal aspect to prayer. Scripture talks about going into your closet, someplace where you're alone, that he, he, when we ask in private, he'll reward us in public, right? There's that aspect of prayer that's personal, that's private, that's alone, that's separated. It's alone with God. And then there's a corporate expression, right? When two or three shall gather in my name, right? And there's a legislative body and the ecclesia, the group, the gathering, the legislative branch of who God is that we can access in prayer. So we have the study of God's word and application that's personal and corporate. And then we have prayer that should be personal and cor corporate, but it should also have this aspect of hearing from God. And I think another discipline that's important, um, just because I want to make sure that I cover it, is that there's a worship aspect. Um, we can't even get into God's presence without that, right? Telling him um, worship and praise is what opens the gates, right? Thanksgiving. And so there's a personal aspect to worship and there's a corporate aspect to worship. There's uh, when Dean and I were traveling for, I, you know, whatever years that we were traveling most of the time, one of the things that I really missed was being able to connect with a body in which I could corporately worship. And that's, that's, a, that's a huge part of who I am, being in a corporate body to worship with. And I remember uh, many years ago, someone told me that being in a corporate body uh, for, for God, they imagined it would be like if you've ever been to an opera and uh, an orchestra is tuning their instruments and getting ready to go, right? And that's what personal and corporate worship is about, is tuning our instruments and getting ready to get into the main event. And being with God is obviously the main event. But what we're going to talk about today are those three structures, but most importantly, prayer, which is the two-way street, and adding the listening aspect to listening to God in prayer. 
And you say, well, Cynthia, you talk about freedom. You know, you talk about healing the brokenhearted and setting the captives free. Yes, I do. And there is a way that we, um, in order to become free and to become healed, we need this aspect. This is a huge part of inner healing. This is a huge part of receiving ministry in the aspect of inner healing. And so some people would even refer to inner healing as listening prayer, right? I can't tell you how to be healed. Only God can and only Jesus can. He can come into your situations. So let's talk for just a few moments before we get into this uh, a bit about how does God speak to us? How does he speak to you? I believe it's very personal. Um, my husband and I are uh, very different. He's visionary. Uh, he sees things. Um, he feels things. He knows them in his body. He, he feels pain that other people experience. Uh, he'll see a vision. He'll have a dream. My husband's a huge dreamer. And so if we're trying to work through some sort of a problem, he'll have a dream or he'll have a vision or he'll feel something uh, when we're praying for uh, people together. We come together and I'm a knower. I just know things. I just know that I know that I know. I don't, I would say maybe it's the, um, the gift of knowledge, but I have that gift to be able to know uh, what to do. And Dean has the gift of be able to see it, to feel it, um, and to even possibly dream it beforehand. And so we will minister a lot together because all of those gifts working together help the person that we're ministering to, right? And my dear friend Patsy, the same thing. She is a much more feeling person than I am. And uh, she hears God differently than I do as well. So how does he speak to you? Some people um, hear God through their thoughts and their impressions. It's a great way when we are able to tune ourselves to the place that we can hear God speak to us in our thoughts and in an impression that this is what I should do. Sometimes people would refer to it that they know in their knower. That's where I am. I just know that I know that this is what God is saying. Um, sometimes I am, I'm, this seems like this would be right. And, I, and as I move towards it, it becomes more confident that yes, this is what God is saying. So it depends on how God speaks to you. Sometimes people get pictures or images. As I said, my husband is a picture or an image. Maybe they'll see a picture of something. Um, and God will speak to them through that or maybe through a dream. Other people will have feeling. They will feel it. They will just, they just feel that this is right. Or they may feel physical pain or they may feel feel physical, uh, physical elation. What, what they just feel it. There are people that feel it. I have a dear friend who, who, um, smells things. Isn't that interesting? She really does. And she can tell, um, when there's demonic presence around because she smells it. And she also knows when God has something on it and she confirm it by, she can confirm it by the smell. Now you can say, oh, I think that's weird. Okay. You can think that's weird. I'm just telling you it's been tested over and over again. And God uses whatever he can use to speak to us. And we have to learn to connect with the way that God speaks with uh with us and so if you think that's weird that's probably not how god's going to speak to you or maybe um in god's humor maybe it will be so let's talk about the steps what are the steps to listening in prayer you're like well i don't need to be told how to listen unfortunately we do need to be told how to listen i've not found a lot of people who are good listeners myself included it's a skill that i have to cultivate to be able to listen and you know we in ministry, we do more by listening than we do by talking. And here I am talking, right? So what are the steps to listening prayer or inner healing prayer or having that two-way communication in prayer? So first, we need to still ourselves, quiet ourselves before God. Oh, isn't that easy to do? No, it's not easy to do because we run so fast in our lives that we don't know how to still ourselves and quiet ourselves before God. Unfortunately, when many of us begin to still ourselves and quiet ourselves, we go off to sleep because it's the same process by which we quiet ourselves to go to sleep at night. So there's a way to quiet ourselves without going to sleep. Sometimes we just need sleep and God says they need to sleep because they're not going to be able to hear me anyway because they're too exhausted. So there is a place in which we need to learn to still ourselves, get ourselves calm and get ourselves into a place in which we have quieted ourselves enough that we could hear him. This comes by practice. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, somewhat how I do that. For me, 
I have to listen to worship music, a certain kind of worship music. Usually I will, uh, as I enter prayer, I will go into uh, warfare prayer, uh, music with drums and beats and uh, very declarative type, and that's my prayer style. However, in worship, I will have a different type of music that I will use, um, and that one that uses uh, music like waves, and because that's more of a sleeping type music for me. So I have specific types of music, and over time, I've gotten to the place where I can sit myself down in a place where it's non-distractive. I can close my door in, in our bedroom or in my office or even in my recliner chair, and I can put myself in, pull myself in, and I can shut myself off from the world around me. I even have, because I've cultivated that, I have had the ability to do that within a, a uh, corporate group. I can close myself in and I can quiet myself to hear the, the Lord. And that's probably just because of years of practice. You can get there. I'm not telling you, you have to be there now, right? But you have to start. It's like exercise. We have to start. So, which brings me to the second step. We need to exercise our, our authority over every other voice, you know. That comes in from James 4, 7, right? Submit yourself to God, right, first. And tell um, the enemy, to, and, the, and the enemy will flee. And so we need to exercise that authority, you know. Say, right now I'm closing myself in with the Lord, and I bind every voice. I bind every, uh, every um, uh, impression. I bind anything, any influences. I, am buying, uh, I bind any type of thing would distract me from what God would say. I just bind those in Jesus' name, and I'm submitting myself to you, Lord God. You know, we can do that with our voice. We can do that um, internally. We can do that externally. And we can just take uh, authority over any other voice. You know, I've had um, friends who, when I very first began, and, and somewhat today, but not so much today, but when I very first began, I just would keep a notebook and I would just write things in the notebook because then they wouldn't keep coming back to me because I'd be like, I got that. Just get away from me now. I got it. I'll deal with that later. Right now, I'm dealing with the Lord. And you know, as we begin this process, you may it may take you a while to get that that um, quieting down, being still in God's presence. It might take a while to be able to get to that place. It may take, I'm just using numbers now. It may take you 10 minutes to get to that place, and then you're going to only sit for five, right? Or it may take you to the place where it takes me only a minute or maybe less than a minute and where I can quiet myself down and I can sit with him for 14, 15 minutes, right? Well, I can sit with him longer, but I'm trying to keep this in like a 15 minute. For some reason, I'm stuck on 15 lately. So my devotions, uh, a daily devotion program podcast is 15 minutes, um, uh, a prayer challenge. I'm trying to keep my videos under 15 minutes. I think that's really the the length of our our ability to be able to tune into something real quick. We can give somebody 15 minutes, right? It's easy to say that. So, you know, certainly we want to say we want to lay before the Lord on hours and hours, and then I have no issue with that whatsoever. But when you're starting uh, to say to you, you know, you need to lay down before the Lord for two hours, I don't think that's realistic that someone's going to be able to do that or they're going to be able to keep themselves engaged for that amount of time. So that's why I'm stuck on the 15. I don't I don't want to get sidetracked because I have a tendency to be able to do that. So you need to be able to quiet yourself before God and exercising the authority over every other voice and every other distraction, according to James 14, submitting ourselves, therefore, to God, right? And telling the enemy to flee from us. And then what we do is we just ask, Jesus, Holy Spirit, come. Come in a very special way. Holy Spirit, we just ask you to come. We ask you to flood our time together. We ask you to come, Lord. I ask you to come and speak, Lord. I ask you to come and move. I just ask you to come, Lord. Draw close to me. And then we just wait, right? I'm ready to go. And so we ask him to come and ask him to speak to us. And once we feel the Holy Spirit and we know that he's here, we know that Jesus is here, we can say, Lord, search me. Search me. Father, come. Holy Spirit, search my heart. What do you want to say to me today? Or what, not necessarily even what do you want to say to me, but Lord, I have this wound in my heart. Come and speak to this area. Come and bring anything that needs healing in my life so that there's no barrier between you and I. Holy Spirit, come. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to those who listen. Lord, draw close to us. Love on us today, Lord. Tell us the things that you want to hear, that you want us to hear. Lord, minister to the wounds in our hearts. 
speak truth to us, Father, right? And that's exactly what happens. He comes, he comes in like a flood, right? And he comes in and he begins to minister to you and just speak peace. I don't know about you, but I feel a lot of peace right now. And I hope that's being transcended through the airways to you, the, the, the peace that just flooded my office, right? So Jesus, we ask you to come. I ask you to come and speak to all of the people that will see this video. Speak truth, Father. In the midst of chaos, we say, be still to the chaos. We say, be still to any distraction voices. Speak, Father. Speak. Wow. I hate to even move on. Come, Lord, what do you want to do? Ask him. Say, Jesus, speak to me. Tell me things that I want to know. Ask him questions. Wait in silence. Just do what you think God would have you do. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us. And as he communicates with you, and as you're waiting in silence for God's communication, write down, if you have paper, write down what God is saying. Write it down. Because what happens is we think we're going to be able to remember everything that he says to us, right? But we don't. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then my last point was to thank him for speaking to you. Thank you, Father, that you speak to us. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for listening. Thank you that you're teaching me to hear your voice. Attune me to your frequency. Let me hear you. Let me know, Father God, what you're saying to me in this day and this hour. Heal the hurts in my heart, Lord. Heal the hurts in my heart. Show me more of who you are. Teach me to be your sheep that hears your voice and follows you. Thank you, Lord. Wow. And um, looking here at my time, I'm getting close on my time, but just continue in that vein and keep records of what God says to you. You know, when I first, you've probably heard me say this many times, that when I first started praying, I started writing a journal to God, dear God. And then I continued that for quite a while. And then I began to speak faster than I could write. So I dropped the pencil and began to pray without writing it down. But I've kept a journal for many years. When God would speak something to me, I wrote it in a journal. And I have a, a, a binder of all the different things that God did in my life. It's like stones of remembrance, right? That's another, another teaching that we'll do someday. But keep those and you can see what God is doing in your life. And you can compare what he said or what you felt or what you're feeling with the word and with what's going on around you and what's going on in your family, around your work and your fellowship and what's going on in the community. Whatever chaos is going on around you, you can compare it to God's word and what he's saying to you. So I wanted to share with you today, and uh, I still feel the presence of the Lord very heavily. And so I want you to continue in that vein. I want you to continue to hear the Lord. I want you to continue to ask him to speak to you. I want you to invite him into your pain, invite him into your questions, invite him, and then just wait until he gives you an answer and write it out and be sure to say thank you, right? And so as I get ready to close today, I just want to say thanks for watching Lunch and Learn. I'm Cynthia Martin, and uh, we'll be continuing this um, listening prayer. We're going to be talking about the obstacles. If you run into some obstacles today, uh, part two will be next week when we're going to be talking about the obstacles that keep us from being able to experience his presence. And so um, once again, I'm Cynthia Martin from Real Life Revised. Be sure to go over to Real Life Ministry Group and become a part of that group so that you can continue on because that's where all of our action is going to be taking place in the future. So I just, again, want to in, uh, encourage you to learn to hear the shepherd's voice, right? My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And we want to be sheep of the good shepherd. God bless you and thank you for joining me today on Lunch and Learn. Have a fabulous day.